Uh, howdy, y'all. Auntie T here. Now, a friend from uh, Canada, Mr. Christopher James, he, uh, he came out with this documentation that uh, he can neither verify nor can I. It's uh, authenticity or uh, you know, if it's uh, real or not, basically is what I'm saying. So, but no one in Canada, the way I've learned to see how it's like and knowing what their agenda is up there already and seeing what they've already done and what they are in the process of doing, I see no reason not to believe this. So, why don't I read it all together and uh, we'll see what we learn from that, all right? This must go viral. And to every MLA, MP, MMP, and all authorities. Forward LPC, Strategic Committee, Leak Inbox, LPC Leader, LPC underscore leaker at protonmail.com. 147 p.m., seven hours ago, to hello. On Saturday, October 10th, 2020, 1.38 p.m., removed, removed, wrote, Dear Removed, I want to provide you very important information. I'm a committee member with the Liberal Party of Canada. I sit within several committee groups, but the information I am providing is originating from the Strategic Planning Committee, which is steered by the PMO, which I believe is the Prime Minister's office. I need to start off by saying that I'm not happy doing this, but I have to. As a Canadian, and more importantly, as a parent who wants a better future, not only for my children, but for the children of others as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other reason I'm doing this is because roughly 30% of committee members are not pleased with the direction this will take Canada, but our opinions have been ignored and they plan on moving forward towards their goals. They have also made it very clear that nothing will stop the planned outcomes. The roadmap aim was set out by the Prime Minister's office and is as follows. Phase in secondary lockdown restrictions on a rolling basis, starting with major metropolitan areas first and expanding outwards, expected by November 2020. Rush the acquisition of or construction of insul isolation facilities across every province and territory, expected by December 2020. Now, if you want to hit this link that just showed up on the top of your screen there, that'll take you to that video I did just a, a week or so ago about the, the member of parliament there talking about these very same internment camps. You want to go watch that and then come back? Y'all go ahead. Now, daily new cases of COVID-19 will surge beyond capacity of testing, including increases in COVID-related deaths following the same growth curves expected by end of November 2020. Complete and total secure uh, secondary lockdown, much stricter than the first and second roll and phase restrictions, expected to end of December 2020, early January 2021. Reform and expansion of the unemployment program to be transitioned into universal basic income, expected by Q1 2021. Projected COVID-19 mutation and or co-infections with secondary virus, referred to as COVID-21, leading to a third wave of much higher mortality rate and higher rate of infection, expected by February 2021. Daily new cases of COVID-21 hospitalizations and COVID-19 and 21 related deaths will exceed medical care facilities capacity expected by Q1 to Q2 2021. Enhanced lockdown restrictions referred to as third lockdown will be implemented. Full travel restrictions will be imposed including inter-province and inter-city expected by Q2 2021. Transitioning of individuals into universal basic income program expected mid Q2 2021. Projected supply chain breakdowns Inventory shortages, large economic instability, expected late Q2 2021. The deployment of military personnel into major metropolitan areas, as well as all major roadways and established travel checkpoints. Restrict travel and movement. 
provide logistical support to the area expected by Q3 2021. Along with the provided roadmap, the Strategic Planning Committee was asked to design an effective way to transition in Canadians to meet the unprecedented economic endeavor, one that would change the face of Canada and forever alter the lives of Canadians. What we were told was that in order to offset what was essentially an economic collapse on an international scale, the federal government was going to offer Canadians a total debt relief. This is how it works. The federal government will offer the eliminate, to eliminate all personal debts, mortgages, loans, credit cards, etc., which all funded will be provided to Canada by the IMF under what will become known as the debt, or World Debt Reset Program. In exchange for acceptance of this total debt forgiveness, the individual would forfeit ownership of any and all property and assets forever. The individual would have to agree to partake in the COVID-19-21 vaccination schedule, which would provide an individual with unrestricted travel and unrestricted living, even under the full lockdown, though the use of photo identification referred to as Canada Health Plan. Committee members asked, <clears throat> who would become the owner of the forfeited property and the assets in the scenario that would and what would happen to lenders of financial institutions we were simply told the world debt reset program would handle all the details which means they're going to own everything several committee members also questioned what would happen to individuals if they refused to participate in the world debt reset program or the health pass or the vaccination schedule and the answer we got was kind of very troubling Essentially, we were told it was our duty to make sure we came up with a plan to ensure that would never happen. We were told it was in the individual's best interest to participate. When several committee members pushed relentlessly to get an answer, we were told that those who refused would first live under the lockdown restrictions indefinitely. And that over a short period of time, as more Canadians transitioned into the debt forgiveness program, the ones who refused to participate would be deemed a public safety risk and would be relocated into these isolation facilities. Once in these facilities, they were given two options, participate in the debt forgiveness program and be released or stay indefinitely in this isolation facility under the classification of a serious public health risk and have all your assets seized. So as you can imagine, after hearing all of this turned into quite a heated discussion and escalated beyond anything I've ever witnessed before, in the end, it was implied that the Prime Minister's office that the whole agenda will move forward no matter who agrees with it or not. That it won't just be Canada, but in fact all nations will have similar roadmaps and agendas. That we need to take advantage of the situations before us to provide change on a grander scale for the betterment of everybody. The members who were opposed and the ones who brought up the key issues that would arise from such a thing were completely ignored. Our opinions and concerns were ignored. We were simply told just to do it. Now all I know is that I don't like it and I think it's going to place Canadians into a dark future. Well, there you go my friends. I don't know what y'all think of that but you know like I said from what I've seen in this world already from Australia with their crazy lockdowns to Europe and all these other countries it looks like it's a hundred percent real and don't think Merck ain't gonna be involved in that because you know dang well that if the Democrats get in you're right up on deck so we all got to be concerned about this we all got to learn more about this and we all got to share the living hell out of this I you know I I, I don't know what you gotta believe to not see how if you correlate this to what's actually happening in the world it makes perfect sense now knowing what we know here now if you all keep an eye on what happens in Canada you'll be able to track this thing you'll see that the lockdown started well they just started up in Toronto I saw an ad there that they're locking them down again so it's already starting to come to true so like I said Y'all might want to study into this stuff a lot harder. If you go to 
a warriorcause.com and I'll leave a link down below and check out all his stuff that Mr. Christopher James has done to wake us all up. I think it's vitally important that y'all do that. It's so important. Our entire futures depend on this. Anyways, I think I've given you enough information there. Y'all can do with what you like. In the meantime, I want y'all to have a blessed day. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. And we'll talk to you real soon. Bye for now.